Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Cybersecurity Mindset Channel. My name is Alex Hubbard, and I am a cybersecurity engineer slash VCSO slash sysadmin. I wear a lot of hats. I've got a lot of experience in the field. And today we're going to take a look at zero-day vulnerabilities and you know, what you may need to do to mitigate them. In, in the realm of cybersecurity, uh, zero-day vulnerabilities, they pose a significant threat to organizations and individuals alike. Uh, a zero-day vulnerability refers to a software, software floor flaw or weakness uh, that's exploited by hackers before the software vendor or developer becomes aware of its existence or has an opportunity to develop a patch. Uh, because there is a zero day time between the discovery of the vulnerability and the release of a fix, attackers can launch attacks and compromise systems without any warning, making these vulnerabilities extremely dangerous. As someone who spends a significant amount of time with clients, I've seen a rise in this over the last, say, let's say six months or so. Uh, lately, I've seen a lot in VPN products, shockingly. Um, so it's definitely something that's on the rise lately. Uh, Zero-day vulnerabilities have a few characteristics that you can look out for. Uh, they're typically unknown in nature. So zero-day vulnerabilities are by definition unknown to software vendors or developers, the users and administrators. Uh, attackers gain access to or, or gain a significant advantage uh, by exploiting these flaws uh, since they operate under, they typically operate under the radar of conventional security measures. You know, no application is 100% perfect and even code written by big name vendors has the p possibility for zero days. It's common. Um, I've seen pretty much any software vendor out there has had a zero day at some point in time. Uh, it's a... Uh, you know, it's a big thing in the industry. There's no available patch. You know, since the software vendor is unaware of the vulnerability or the flaw, you know, there is no official patch or update to defend against the exploit, which kind of leaves you as the organization or individual, you know, in a, in a bit of a helpless position, right? Um, users are typically left unprotected until the vendor identifies and addresses the issue. You know, so a lot of the times, I think there's one out there for Microsoft right now, I don't remember the CVE off the top of my head, uh, but there's not a patch right away for it. You know, there are workarounds, uh, you know, or other compensating controls that you can put into place to mitigate the risk until the vendor can come up with a patch or, or fix for the vulnerability. You know, a lot of these vulnerabilities tend to be targeted, uh, or a lot of these zero-day exploits tend to be targeted. So zero-day vulnerabilities, they're, you know, they're often highly valued for attackers and threat actors, uh, especially state-sponsored state -sponsored groups and cyber criminals. You know, many of them use these exploits in sophisticated attacks against high-value targets. You know, this doesn't necessarily mean that your small organization is not affected by zero-day vulnerabilities. That's not the case here. You know, if you have a zero-day vulnerability, you should absolutely look at your manufacturer, or your software developer, you know, whoever put the product out, look at their recommendations to make sure you're safe until they can patch it, um, you know, whether that be a compensating control or otherwise. You know, as a cybersecurity professional, there are mitigation strategies you can take to reduce the risk to your organization's environment. Uh, mitigating a zero-day vulnerability, it's, it's, it's a challenging task and it's a never-ending task in my opinion. Uh, but there are several strategies that organizations can adopt to minimize the risk and impact of these threats. You know, this is one of the reasons that you want to have multiple layers of security in your organization. You know, if one layer fails, you want to have something else in place to catch these guys, you know, even if the systems are not 100% foolproof. One of the most, I don't want to say easiest ways, but the, the top way that you can mitigate these is to regularly patch and update your software. Uh, you know, zero-day vulnerabilities are, you know, they're typically undiscovered and maintaining a so software updates and patch management process, it's essential. You know, pro promptly applying any security patches from your vendors can prevent exploitations of known zero days, reducing your attack sur surface for potential zero-day threats. 
uh, and to have a, an effective patch management program, you need to have a solid asset inventory. And I don't just mean hardware assets, computers, workstations, laptops, servers, that sort of thing. You also need to have a software asset inventory. How do you patch a product or, or protect a product that you don't know is in your environment, right? So you need to be able to confidently say, I know I have all this hardware, I have this software, you know, and, and obviously justify and track both of those in order to keep your environment secure. You know, the second piece would be network and host based intrusion detection systems or IDS. I implementing a solution like this, they can help detect suspicious activities and anomalies on the network level, the host level. These si systems can identify potential zero day exploits by monitoring abnormal behavior or, or unusual behavior or unusual network traffic patterns. You know, while having an IDS is a good move from a security standpoint, uh, just having one in place is not necessarily enough. Uh, ideally a perfect solution, you know, you would have a monitored or SOC monitoring your system 24 seven by 365. You know, one of the biggest, one of the biggest ways that, or, or times that threat actors, hackers, attackers, they, they go after companies when they know it's a big holiday. They know people are not watching on a weekend or a Friday night or, you know, some kind of big national holiday. So having a managed SOC in place that monitors some of these, you know, monitors your ideas, monitors your SIM, that type of stuff, and is able to act on those alerts in your absence um, that's another way you can uh, kind of mitigate some of these zero days. I mean, that's just good security practice in general to have, but it's, a, it's another way to mitigate it. You know, your many IDS systems or intrusion detection systems, they, they have the ability to integrate with other systems. So, you know, if you, if you have an IDS and it detects some kind of weird network traffic or network session, it might be able to talk to your firewall or your switch and, you know, kill that session or shut that, switch port off or contain a host if it talks to something like CrowdStrike, things of that nature. Those are, that's what you're looking for in this particular section. So for number three, I would say network segmentation is a big way you can mitigate zero days. And, and honestly, a lot of these steps that I'm talking about for zero days are, they're just good security practice in general. Uh, they're things that I would re re recommend to any client regardless of zero day you know, ransomware, anything like that. So this is a lot of this is, is good security practice in, in, in good security hygiene in general. So network segmentation, and what I mean by that is, you know, you're gonna divide your network into segments or VLANs, virtual LANs, and you're gonna use things like ACLs to restrict communication between those VLANs, which would limit the impact of a zero day exploit you know, and it should allow, you know, you to be able to contain it a little better. So if one segment of your network is compromised, the, the rest of the network may remain protected, limiting your, you know, this will, this will limit your attacker's lateral movement. And it's, again, good security practice regardless of zero-day vulnerabilities. This is something that can help prevent the spread of other threats like ransomware, malware, and so forth. Number four would be application allow listing and block listing. You can leverage application allow listing and block listing to allow approve, only approved software or block certain software, uh, allow only trusted applications to run on your organization's systems. Uh, this approach prevents unknown and potential, uh, potentially malicious software and scripts from you know, exploiting vulnerabilities, you know, zero day or otherwise, on your systems. You also want to take a look at being able to block things like PowerShell scripts and preventing users from accessing PowerShell in any form. You know, it's, a, it's another step to ensure that, your, uh, that threat actors cannot harm your organization. And these are, again, all layered. This is a layered approach. Five kind of goes with IDS, behavioral analysis, anomaly detection. You, know, you want to use advanced tools that, uh, or security tools that employ behavioral analysis and anomaly detection. They can help you identify, you know, suspicious activity, which might be indicative of a zero day. Um, you know, for some reason, Johnny in HR comes in at, you know, eight o'clock every morning, Monday through Friday. And for some reason, you know, he's now logging in from, 
you know, remotely via the VPN at 2 a.m. from, you know, a foreign country or something, that would be considered an anomaly. So tools like that, you know, things like CrowdStrike, Arctic Wolf, Sentinel-1, Darktrace, systems kind of like that are going to be able to detect anomalies and you know, more than just act on them, but, you know, some of them can, or excuse me, more than just alert on them, some of them can actually act on them and you can kind of teach them or show or, or uh, configure them to you know take certain actions on a specific anomaly number six security awareness and training this honestly this should be number one i should kind of <laughs> rewrite this my script here and my notes here to make this point number one uh this is the biggest and most important step you can take and, and you know it's uh educating employees users about the risks of opening suspicious links downloading files from untrusted sources and other common attack vectors can truly help prevent the initial um, exploitation of a zero-day vulnerability through social engineering and phishing techniques. There are a lot of security professionals that I have met in the field that feel that a user shouldn't be responsible for security and that you know, security should fall on the cybersecurity team. I disagree with that fully. Um, I've spent many, many years uh, supporting end users uh, from, you know, your basic, you know, entry level role all the way up to your C levels, VIPs, that sort of stuff. And the commonality between them all, they all click on links and emails and they all click open attachments. Um, so having training in place to make them aware of that continued training. I don't mean just, you know, once a year, but I mean having security in front of them on a monthly or bi-weekly type of a basis is going to improve your security posture greatly. It's, it's literally the biggest thing that I have seen over the years as a sysadmin, an IT manager, uh, a, an engineer. You know, this is, your, this is usually your always your entry point is somebody clicked on something most of the time in my personal, in my personal experience. You may have a difference of opinion, but for me, this, this, is, a, this is a big one. Um, and yes, you should have controls in place to stop users from clicking things or uh, you know, mitigate if they do click things, but the first, your first line of defense is that user clicking on something and training them on what to look for is absolutely a big piece to this. Number seven would be collaboration and vulnerability sharing. So in encouraging responsible disclosure and fostering collaboration within the cybersecurity community are, they're crucial to trying to find the zero days, remediate the zero days. Uh, when security researchers, ethical hackers, white hat hackers, they identify a zero day vulnerability, uh, they have the ability to work with vendors most of the time to you know, find the vulnerability and develop a patch before a malicious actor can exploit them and this moves me into you know number eight which is a, a bug bounty program a lot of software vendors have for you know finding these vulnerabilities so cybersecurity researchers and uh you know white hat hackers ethical hackers if you will you know can take a you know an app, a software application and find a vulnerability and they're not necessarily going to disclose it to the public they're going to go to the vendor and say listen hey i found um you know, I found this vulnerability in your software, you need to patch it, it's pretty critical, it's, you know, whatever level it is. And a lot of the times the software developer, the software vendor, you know, they may offer that researcher a, a, a bounty, if you will, or, or a fee for finding that and disclosing it to them. Uh, so you definitely, if you're a software developer, if your company develops software, you want to think about encouraging having a bug bounty program. If you're a regular you know, organization, you're not developing software. This one, I guess, doesn't, number seven and eight really, I guess, probably don't apply to you for that uh, unless you're developing software. Now, overall, zero day vulnerabilities, they represent a significant challenge in the cybersecurity landscape. It is almost impossible to completely eliminate the risk. You know, organizations can take proactive measures to mitigate the impact of these threats. Uh, maintaining a strong cybersecurity posture, adopting the right technologies kind of that I've talked about earlier in this video, you know, having collaboration between other security researchers, security engineers, cybersecurity folks in general, you know, organizations can better protect themselves against potential damage, damages caused by zero-day exploits. 
remember that security, cybersecurity, it's, it's an ongoing process. You're constantly staying vigilant. You, you always want to um, you know, pay attention to the latest threats. Read your, as a cybersecurity professional or somebody who's getting into it or transitioning careers, just in general, even if you're a sysadmin watching this video, you want to stay alert of any cybersecurity alerts that come out. So sign up for CISA, CISA alerts. Look at various different blog posts. Just stay apprised of what's going on in the world because it's going to help you stay ahead of um, it's going to help you stay ahead of those threats. So if you found this video helpful, I hope you did. Please consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video, and I will see you in the next video.